So I would like to introduce our next, next speakers, um, which are uh, Wuha, sorry, David Trafela of Sunesis and Nikolai uh, Candelari of Cybergrid. And they will discuss open source interoperability for distributed energy storage and other flexibility resources. Thanks to you, you can start now. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Um, so, like, like they said, we are Nicola and David. We are, for the record, both students, still. So, uh, please have mercy on us with questions. Um, but then, today we'll present you the uh, Project Interstore and its goals, in which our companies and many others are participating. Um, so, um, to start, um, on the on the uh, on the market, on the grid, there are many protocols for the distributed energy resources integration, and this is both a good thing because many many protocols means you can uh, integrate many different resources properly, but also it it can be a, a challenge or a problem uh, even uh, because the different protocols and their different implementations of which there are many, um, are hard to, to connect, to, to, to talk to each other. And then um, there's also a big need, a bigger, well, a rising need for the, for the data exchange, um, you know, in many use cases around the projects and also in real-time scenarios, um, um, we, we see the rising need for that. So that these two challenges, uh, brought the the wise men of the consortium of the Interstor project to to start working on the objectives of Interstore, which are basically the 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 solution for the these two challenges. So the um, the uh, development of a open source software, which would help um, for easier inter communication between different protocols. Uh, and this software would be uh, then um, developed in on three levels. So, um, but will will all three levels will be uh, via NATS, uh, and the data model would be IEEE 2030.5. Now, why we will use NATS and not maybe REST, which is more common, and why IEEE? We'll leave that to to David. But um, what I can say is that. The three, the three um, software develop, developed uh, will will look like like this. So, one of the software will be the legacy protocol converter. So, for the older, so for the existing um, um, communication protocols and the conversion to it, and then we will develop client-server protocol for the newer, so the the one to be to be integrated in the grid, uh, and also the third thing we will develop is the uh, protocol certification for this new protocol um, so that the integration is as seamless as possible. Now this is the first objective. Uh, the second, as I said, is the, um, the push for more, um, more uh, bigger involvement of data exchange. And the third would be the further integration of distributed energy storages for which we can we can say batteries, but also many others, um, into the grid. Um, so just a quick recap: the full the full title of the project is interoper interoperable open source tools to enable hybridization, utilization, monetization of storage flexibilities. Uh, the founding mechanism is through Horizon Eur Europe project. Um, the project started this January and will last for three years. Uh, and the budget, the total budget is 4.3 million euros. Um, because the, of the challenges and objectives, the, the partners involved in the project are, um, are, are different. You know, I'm coming from CyberGrid, which is a company uh, from industry. Um, and then David is coming from small and medium enterprise, 
uh, also working industry, but then there are also some universities, uh, like the coordinator, uh, the Aachen University, and, and we have also many other institutes, research and development uh, uh, institutes. Um, well, the, the 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 objectives will be. Uh, <coughs> We will we will um, work on the objectives um, in in, uh, in two pillars in a system of two pillars, which means that uh, we have uh, two basic um, support structures to the to the um, uh, to the objectives you want to do to have. Um, the first pillar uh, will will um, develop the open source software and the three you know um, implementations of it. Uh, and also have a push on the data, uh, connecting the d data to the open data spaces. And then the second is more practical, well, practical uh, connected to existing I infrastructure. Uh, and we'll, we'll develop the, the already uh, used um, energy management systems uh, to, to new, um, to new um, well, levels um, so that there is a implementation of this new top software and also the push for the storage systems. And uh, then using these new tools, the developed energy management systems will try to, to, um, to get an advantage on the, on the market. Um, so the, we will develop the software. We will, we will make a new generation of EMS so energy management systems. And then, you know, to, to check if everything also works in practice, we have nine use cases. Uh, you can see them here on the picture. Uh, and you may also see, you know, which software, developed software will be used in, each, in which use case and which EMS on, the, on your right um, will, will make sure that the software um, is, is properly um, so integrated, and then the use case is it shows the the benefits of it. Um, so uh, here's just a, a grid. I can also show you here the you know a more, even more practical um, case. So a case of this. So um, as I said, I'm from CyberGrid, and we have a an EMS CyberNOC which really um, basically helps the aggregation, is a, an aggregation platform for the distributed energy resources, plus it then um, um, markets flexibilities from these resources. And we will use this uh, to help the uh, energy community um, to, 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 to achieve greater sustainability and then um, trade the access energy on the different markets. So what is IEEE 2035? It is also known as Smart Energy Profile that was developed by uh, Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers. It is basically a communication standard that involves a range of applications such as demand response, load control, time of use pricing, and the management of distributed generation and electric vehicles. In more technical terms, IEEE 2030.5 defines the application layer with TCP IP, providing functions for a transport and internet layers. It interacts with various physical layers, and a variety of lower layer protocols may be used in the, may be involved to provide a complete solution. The standard also defines the mechanisms for exchanging application messages and specifies the exact messages, including error messages, that are exchanged. It was designed to support a variety of use cases in the domain of the smart grid technologies. This includes supports for distributed energy resources, electric vehicles, and customer energy management systems. It's capable of conveying price signals demand response signals, and other relevant information from the utility to customer devices, and vice versa. 
This two-way communication allows for better uh, coordination of energy generation and usage. It was designed uh, to basically, the standard has a potential to play a significant role in the transformation energy sector, especially uh, with respect to the integration of renewable energy resources, electric vehicles, and the general shift towards more interactive and dynamic energy generation practices. Some advantages of the standard are that it promotes all interoperability uh, because it uses common language and format for data exchange, uh, so it makes it easier for devices from different manufacturers to communicate between each other. It's also flexible and extensible as it allows addition of new functionalities and capabilities as the technology evolves. It also supports the concepts of demand response, load control, time of use, pricing, and other initiatives that make up a smart grid, improving grid efficiency and reliability. It is also easily integrable as it is built on widely used technologies and protocols such as HTTP and XML. Here in this image we can see global interest in IEEE 2030.5 as of May 2021, and in the future we expect this to grow exponentially. Neural Autonomic Transport System, or NATS, is an open source, cloud-native messaging system often used in distributed systems, microservices, and IoT networks. It is designed to be simple, secure, and high performance with clients available in a variety of programming languages. And even though IEEE 2030.5 uses REST for communication, we will use NATS because of its properties. It is designed to be lightweight and fast, providing high true output and low latency, which is crucial in real-time systems. It also supports publish, subscribe, point-to-point -point communication, uh, communication models, which are asynchronous in nature, so it doesn't create performance bottlenecks and it doesn't block processes. It also promotes loose coupling between services as it uses a messaging system and it doesn't require knowledge of the endpoints and it also supports real-time updates through its publish and subscribe model. It also has the advantage of having built-in mechanisms of for handling failure such as automatic reconnection, message redelivery, and queue groups for the distributing load and ensuring continuity of services. And last but not least, it is also simpler than the rest, which has multiple conventions and standards, because NATS has a minimalistic design philosophy and a straightforward API. Our project, or our toolkit, will consist of two solutions client server connectivity and legacy protocol converter connectivity. In client server connectivity, energy devices will act as clients and utility companies will act as servers. Here basically devices will send data uh, to the servers using NATS implementing IEEE 2030.5. This solution is more suitable for uh, grids that are being built and for devices that support custom execution of programs. The second solution is a legacy protocol converter. Basically here, legacy protocol converter will act as a middleware between energy devices and utility companies. Uh, and here, devices do not send data directly to these servers, but they send the data to legacy protocol converter using Modbus or MQTT. And then legacy protocol converter will convert this to NATS or MQTT, both implementing IEEE 2030.5. And then legacy protocol converter will forward this data to the utility companies. This solution is more suitable for already established grids and devices that do not support execution of custom programs. Basically here, legacy protocol converter will act as an aggregator. Our, our project will be open source, available on GitHub. It will include a reference implementation with test procedures. And I would like to emphasize 
that everybody is welcome to contribute to the project once available. The first version will be available in March 2024. So uh, the idea is that we develop the software for the first part and, and then the first version. And then we really, if we want to achieve the, the breach, you know, between different protocols, we will need your help. You know, we will need um, an open source community, build, build an open source community and have as many, um, as many participant, participants as possible to really, you know, reach different aspects, you know, which we will not cover during these three years of development um, and, you know, really, really achieve the interoperable, interoperable status we want to have. So for any of you who would like to participate afterwards in the community building, building part, you're really um, invited to come to us after the presentation and we can discuss it further. Um, that's it. Thank you. Okay, we have a lot of time to, for questions, so please, if you have any questions, that's the right time. Yes. Thanks for the talk, really interesting. I really think it's an, uh, a really good use case project to, to work on. What was not really clear to me is where does the that legacy converter part of the code, where does it live? Is it on device or is it in, in some kind of backend store? Well, basically it will live on some kind of IoT gateway. Okay. Uh, it can also live on some main device that will uh, get all the data. Uh, but usually it, it is designed to live on a gateway. Mm but also it can really live anywhere. It will be a microservice, so it can be in the cloud, or it can be even in device. It will be designed to uh, function on uh, the devices in constrained environment, so it will take a lot of resources, energy, and so on. And after that, just sending it through to the, to the, to the end receiver part, then? Yes. Yeah, cool. Okay, thanks. Also here, just to say, uh, the legacy protocol converter. We also have many many different uh, ways of you know implementation, not just one, in order to have it as big an effect as possible. Yeah, I can imagine that that it's custom code, so you don't really want to have it downloaded on a device itself. Just send the legacy protocol to the gateway and then parsing it. Cool. And all those the, all those different mappings from the legacy to the to the to the to the end to the end protocol is uh, open source and managed by uh, managed in the GitHub project. I think then. Yes, cool. basically the biggest challenge is mapping from Modbus huh. because each device is different uh, registers uh, with different function codes. So this will be the biggest challenge. But with MQTT, it's pretty straightforward. We have topics, uh, so it's a lot easier than uh, Modbus. Makes a lot of sense. Thanks. Are there any device manufacturers currently busy with implementing the IEEE 2035 standard in the devices? So, inverter company, mean, you mean? Not just uh, any device mm -hmm. manufacturer, like solar inverters? Uh, no. No, there were, there were many talks, and there are still many talks, and, you know, some come back and some say yes and no, and so, but no, uh, for, for this time, no. We, which is a shame, right? Because we, we really want to, to have them on board and have a first person, let's say, experience of what the device um, looks like in the, behind the hood, let's say. Thanks. Hi, I had a question about uh, the choice for 2030.5. Uh, we are uh, uh, from a DSO uh, and obviously focus a lot on 61850. Um, and what's the um, difference or choice between uh, 2030.5 or 61850, which also standardizes uh, DR integration? 
why did you choose for 2030.5? Because it's supposed to be newer and there's also a lot of, it's supposed to standardize the communication in a more general way and it's supposed to include a lot more devices. Uh, and there are already some use cases in California and Australia. Uh, but yeah, basically it's... Yeah, I think uh, uh, California and Australia are standardizing on this uh, indeed yeah. uh, by legislation also. Um, uh, but in the European Union it's a, a, a bit of 61850 and uh, battle between those, uh, those two uh, standardization bodies, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as much as I have read on this, I think the difference is also that IEEE was made for distributed systems, which we also focus on. So, um, distribute energy resources or you know storage resources, storage systems, uh, and you know the 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 second one. I'm I'm sorry, I don't know the correct name, so I will say the second one is it, it was developed after f to integrate this part and I I E was designed for this so I think this is the yeah. the difference here yeah. okay thanks any other question So thanks again. Um, the next topic w is actually cancelled because Abhishek Kumar could not make it today, so sorry for that. Um, so we're going to come back at 2 p.m. for um, another talk on CPAS more technical by Mathieu and Florent from RT. Um, if you have, so if you have any questions regarding the LF energy I think it's, uh, we can definitely answer to some of your questions because you may know that this uh, group of the Linux Foundation is quite new. Uh, definitely I encourage you to, uh, to join. There is many projects. You have just a sub overview here today of the projects of the LF Energy, but I can, uh, I can say that, that there is many projects coming, uh, very interesting in a lot of different areas. Today, uh, we, you saw already Everest and CPAS, but there are some others. So, it's, there is a pure open source governance, so feel free to join. Okay, thank you.